Uh, hello everyone and welcome to another story time with Wookie. I'm here with Zenrot. Hi. It's time to talk another story about um, what's been going on in basically my day to day life. I will say so. We want someone recently asked me on specifically. I want to say it was to be released. What the fuck is up with my Taco Bell? Because it seems like for whatever reason. Um, I have a weird relationship with my Taco Bell that um, transcends the boundaries of what is okay and what is not okay. <laughs> That's the easiest way I can put it. So just to give uh, a, a sum up of what's been going on with my Taco Bell, I'll first say to Zen, because I don't think you were here for... Uh, I talked to the Mew Mew Force about this. Uh, last time I almost got into a uh, fight with the Taco Bell manager because um, at some point she decided... So for the longest time, I think she's been trying to gaslight me into believing that what I ordered is not what I ordered. So... Uh, what, what would she benefit from this? I don't know, but she kept doing it consistently. And it got to the point where I started to see everything she was doing as a slight to me. So here's what she was doing, is that I would always order the same... I meant my... Literally... My order does not change. It is always the combo number five. It is a taco with only uh, meat and cheese. And then on the nachos itself, um, there's no tomato and no beans. Now, here's the thing that fucks her up is that on the taco, there's sour cream. But I don't want any sour cream on the um, on the taco. But on the nachos, I want sour cream and I want no beans. But she's been interpreting it, it as, oh, he's wrong. He doesn't remember that he wants no sour cream. So I'm going to remove the sour cream and add beans. And she does this consistently. <laughs> and um, I, f- I finally started saying back to like, I you have to make this again because you guys fucking put beans all over it and I wanted sour cream. So you got it completely wrong. Uh, and then recently, um, and she's been, she's been doing it consistently. Like she sees my face, she knows who I am. And one time when I kept trying to tell her the order, I literally told her order to her face and it was like, okay, in one, out one ear in out the other. And she got the order wrong. One time I went to someone at the cashier, I told the cashier what I wanted. And then she, uh, looked at the order and then said, sir, sir. And she looked at me, I'm like, yeah. Are you sure you want the nachos this way? Because I see you want no sour cream. And, uh, you want uh, you want no beans, but yes, sour cream. Are you sure you don't want sour cream and no? Uh, it, it it was a whole. Are you sure you want no sour cream and just add beans? And I was like, no, it was right the first time. I don't know why you're coming up to me. And and also another time when I ordered, she literally sighed in my face, as if she was done with me. And I was like, what? <laughs> just over your shit. I was like, what? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, so um, I almost completely uh, lost my cool at the Taco Bell because one time uh, they got the order completely wrong. Uh, and then I said, can you please do it again? It's just 100% wrong. Uh, the lady started doing it again. They fucked up the order again because they put... Um, like shredded cheese on top of the not you're not even supposed to put shredded cheese on top of nachos but someone fucked up and put shredded cheese on top of the nachos and then um they gave me my order and it was wrong and then basically the manager looked at me and said uh we accidentally added something but it should be fine and then (laughs) she went back to go do her work job and then I looked at the nachos, and there was, like, uh, literally, like, no meat on it. It was, like, someone put one tiny slice of meat into the nachos and said, no, that's enough beef. And I looked at it, and it goes, like, hey, where's the beef? I need more beef. Can you add more beef, please? Because I add, ordered nachos with this, and then also, I technically have the right to put this back, because you motherfuckers literally fucked up the order right in front of me. Like, I was watching them fuck up the order. <laughs> And the manager said, no, there's beef. Just look underneath the nachos. And I was like about to go, this bitch, this unbelievable, (laughs) who is she to literally like brush me aside when I'm like, what do you mean it's underneath the nachos? You want me to eat the nachos and then find the mystical beef that lies underneath the nachos? (laughs) You had to dig it out. Yeah. So I was about to just fucking lose it. And then the cashier who 
he was basically doing that thing from uh, that meme from the Jurassic Park movie, the new ones, where he's like putting his hands in front of the raptors because he saw that <laughs> I was about to lose it at this lady. He's like, you know what? Uh, she's like, now nah, you got to add more beef to this <laughs> because he's not leaving. And it seems clear that he's about to uh, completely mess up on this. Just add the beef. Yeah. And so finally they added more beef and I was fucking steaming. Because I was as I was eating the nachos with also the fucking again because they added shredded cheese to it that I did not want and I was still eating it. I got angry because I was like, actually, shredded cheese is very good with this nacho cheese, and I'm angry that it tastes good. <laughs> is there ever a circumstance where shredded cheese tastes bad? Uh, no, I'll say no. I don't think there's ever been a case in the in the human history that says a shredded cheese has ever been bad. Um. So after this event, I got extremely angry. I was, like, almost done with the Taco Bell. That was enough for me to throw up my cape, like, uh, fucking in, in Spider-Man 2 when Spider-Man uh, just gets rid of his outfit. Like, that's how I felt with this Taco Bell. I was like, I'm done. That's <laughs> where you just put it in the trash and walk away. Yeah, that was basically how I felt. Uh, eventually, I decided to go back, and I kept hoping, I hope this manager's not here. Because literally, I have problems whenever this manager is here, and it's only when she's here that I have this problem. And so I go back uh, a couple times, and she's not there, so I'm like, okay, everything's fine. Uh, and then she starts coming, and then she, when she is there, it starts to get weird, because now I'm in the mentality of, we obviously both don't like each other. Because it's obvious I don't like you, and it's also obvious from you that you don't like me, because through this interaction, we're both just done with each other. Uh, this is when I started noticing that there's something weird, and it never bothered me until she started doing it, and I never noticed it. Have you ever had that thing where cashiers will not put something in your hand. They put it down on the table instead? Yes, but also they put it down in your table right when your hand is right next to them and saying, can you please put it in my hand? And they put it right next to you to the side on the on the, on the ground. Yeah, not the definitely. I, I, I don't know. For me, that much, unless there's like already a negative context to the interaction. Yeah, so... Because then that's final fuck you yeah i think i finally figured out like no it's this lady is not this is actually something people do i think it's uh for to avoid i guess hand contact and germs or something but because of i was literally done with her i saw it as like why are you making my life harder why are you why are you doing this none <laughs> of the other taco bell people do this only you and up until recently actually finally she got the order right and i feel like um we're all fine there hasn't been an incident in Taco Bell since. The only incidents that have been there has been times where I guess um, some of the homeless people, like there's like one homeless dude that always goes to the Taco Bell and sometimes, um, for the most part, again, I really do think like I can't like shit on this homeless person because one, they're already going through a pretty rough time. <laughs> but, yeah, it sounds like they've already got stuff going on. Yeah, but it is weird when he's like pulling out his phone and then I think he's yelling at the phone. But then I think he's, I thought he was trying to have a conversation and then it turned off, turned out like, actually you're just yelling because you want someone to talk to you. And it was the weirdest thing ever. And I see this guy around a whole bunch. And then I think he was talking about, what the hell was he talking about? It was the weirdest thing. I think he was talking about nurses with short skirts at the library, which was like, um, those are three things, because he always hangs out in front of the library. I know that because I see him there sleeping from time to time. Um, and it was really weird symbol of like, it almost felt like like hidden text, as if like I was not in the current level of understanding to understand what this man was talking about. And eventually someone did start talking to, about, talking to him as if they understood, but they were also homeless. So then at that point I was like, is there some kind of homeless code that I don't know <laughs> that like I just don't understand? <laughs> Probably. I mean, there's got to be, right? You got to look out for each other. Yeah, for sure. Because it felt like um, at that point, it was it, when he actually started talking to someone who actually understood him, it started to turn into like a, oh, no, you're just a human being. And all the things that are um, that I think are wrong are just like weird preconceived notions in my head that are like causing me to be afraid. <laughs> it's not actually that you're scary. It's that I think that you should be scary which is the thing that's causing me to feel fear right now. But yeah, that's basically all that happens in Taco Bell now. Now that all now the, the, the beef is uh, squashed, I can also say, I don't know why this happened, and maybe this happened to you too. They fucking raised the menu prices. 
by a dollar. I uh, I don't go to talk about well enough to compare the menu prices. I'd probably only go like. So this isn't just Taco Bell. They raised it across the board in like McDonald's and Burger King because I realized that too. Oh, that has not happened to me, to my knowledge. Really? It happened to us and I was like, this feels wrong because I'm playing a dollar more and for anyone to go like, how can you tell? I can fucking tell because I only get the same thing every single time. <laughs> so I can tell not when... very adventurous. Exactly. So I'm like, someone has upped the prices on the food and I don't know why because it's widespread. It's in McDonald's, it's in Burger King, it's in Taco Bell, it's in Tommy's even. And Tommy's, I was like, okay, Tommy's, you're already extremely expensive for your shit. I don't really want to pay an extra dollar on top of everything else for the already expensive food that you have. This feels excessive. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of been... I don't know what's going on with that Taco Bell. But that Taco Bell, by the way, I've been going there since um, middle school. Uh, because what's the... So I think this is the way it went. So I used to go to a middle school um, called Lawrence Middle School. And I did not used to live... I used to, li- I used to live in Reseda, but I went to a um, school in Chatsworth using a, a fake address not a fake address using my uncle's address who lived nearby and the reason was is that my mom thought the schools around us were too ghetto so <laughs> so she's like we're gonna go you're gonna go here and also if anyone asks uh this is where you live and now you have to hide the fact that this is actually where you live and not where you live and i was like okay this is a lot to put on me when i'm just starting middle school and i had to basically start over um, cause most, most, I don't know if you had this experience cause I think, um, most people do, but when you go from elementary school, when you go to middle school, most of the people that there were there at elementary school are also at your middle school. I... Sorry, say that again. Yeah. Generally. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have that. I had, um, I, I basically had to start over again and basically learn a whole bunch of people, uh, from the start. And uh, funny enough, and also sadly enough, because this shows you the the pains of childhood, I did recognize one people, uh, one dude from um, elementary school, and I used to play, what is that, I guess handball was the right way? So I saw him there, and I was like, I was surprised to see him, and I was like, oh, hey, uh, it's you, what's up? I don't remember his name at this point, and, but I do remember what he said afterwards when I said, oh, hey, I didn't know you were coming here, is that he looked at me and said, oh, man, I didn't know you were coming here. And that was basically like, cool, (laughs) guess I'm never talking to you again, dude. (laughs) Okay, bye, guys. Asshole, I'll see you later, I guess. (laughs) Little kids are dicks. Unbelievable assholes, man. That was a quick way of learning, like, yes, man. These kids are assholes. (laughs) That's that's the long and short of it, is that kids are just kind of dicks to begin with. Yeah, generally. Yeah. Kids blow. Yeah. Uh, and the first time also, uh, this is related to the Taco Bell, so there's a um, card game shop next to the middle school that used to sell Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That's actually where I went to go play my Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments eventually. But because I live so far away, my mom used to pick me up and then go um, like right after middle school, so I never had a chance to hang out. But everyone that I knew, because every friend that I had basically played Yu-Gi-Oh, because that's the kind of people I gravitated towards. <laughs> And they always said after school, like, oh, no, we're going here because it's like, uh, this is the place where we can play. And there's like no asshole kids around to potentially steal our cards because we're the asshole kids inside. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Um, So I was like, oh, man, I really want to go. And one time, so eventually I got my mom to convince me. I was like, well, if you actually wait a bit, I can eat a Taco Bell and then you can um, you can wait a bit to pick me up and then it will be all be good. And she's like, "Okay, fine. And then one day I ate Taco Bell and then finished real quick and I was like, I'm going to go quickly over to the game shop because it's really cool and I want to go and all my friends are there. So I went, um, this is me and I want to say I was in seventh grade or so. So I went over to the card game shop and I was like, oh my God, this place is awesome. Like the second I step in, it's like Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, any kind of cards, all these game shops around it. 
And um, when I'm inside, I'm like, okay, I want to buy something, I guess, because I've been recently losing a whole bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh! against friends. So I may as well buy some new cards. And back then, I didn't really buy card packs. I just kind of got whatever leftovers I got from my friends. Right. And I, so I bought it. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's not a box. You remember those, like, $14 ones that used to come with three packs and a card? Yeah. Yeah, so I bought one of those for... I want to say it was Invasion of Chaos. Uh, that's the one with Chaos Emperor Dragon in it, right? Yes. Okay. So I bought one of those, and the first pack that I opened up from it, uh, Black, uh, Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the Beginning was inside of it. <laughs> and All that, right. w- that was an immediate, like, oh my god, this guy looks cool. And then everyone else around me going, like, did this kid just fucking pull Envoy at the Beginning? <laughs> I was surprised that this was around his release, and people were heavy going for him just because I don't think he was banned yet. So I just magically pulled one. Yeah. yeah. So then I got held up because my original plan was buy the cards and then head right back to Taco Bell before my mom showed up. And what happened then was is that I got held up because now everyone wanted to trade for me for this card. And that was when I realized, I'm not going to trade you guys because I realized that... Um, this thing is good because everyone wants it, so that must mean I should hold on to it. Yep. But I basically stayed there way too long. I think I wanted to say I stayed there for an extra 20 minutes. And uh, my mom was waiting for me at the Taco Bell. And around this time, I did not have a phone. So when I realized how much time was passed, I was like, oh, crap, I need to go to the Taco Bell. And if I'm missing for five minutes, my mom is already calling the cops. If I, <laughs> like, in general, like, <laughs> in, in today's life, one time I spent too much time inside the Burger King and she's like, I was about to get ready to go into the car and look for you because you were gone for too long. I was like, Mom, I was just inside a Burger King. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so I was gone for 20 minutes and I quickly rushed to the Taco Bell and I want to say my mom is circling the car around the Taco Bell as if like she's going to find me like just hiding somewhere. I'm like, no. <laughs> and then she sees me coming from far away and I go in and goes like, no, 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 I'm here. And then I go inside and she's like, so panicked because she's like i didn't know where you were i thought you were taken you know we're in a a completely new place and i'm like okay mom i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm like i think i'm literally in tears because i'm like i just wanted to have fun with friends (laughs) i just wanted to do a good thing i didn't mean to lie to you but all my friends go here and it's really fun and i want to go there and uh i'll never betray you like this again uh and to be fair i didn't do that for at least another three years or so she would eventually come to have other resets uh, other things that i would trouble her with but i would never do that again <laughs> and she was like okay so obviously you're in trouble for this so you're not gonna go to talk about after a while but once you're done being grounded um if you talk to me then i'll let you go there and i was like okay that's great uh, and i should have really actually brought this up to you i don't know why in my head i was just like you're never gonna let me go um uh-huh. so after i was like okay a month grounding and then i can go and then after my grounding was over the fucking place was not shut down it had to be closed down because it had bought new owners and it had to go under reconstruction <laughs> and i was like oh my god i waited this long and now i have to wait for the actual <laughs> like for the place to be rebuilt it wasn't like getting uh torn down or anything it was just like new people were taking over and they're like this place is a fucking garbage mess we need to clean it up <laughs> And they did, and eventually I would go on to have a bunch of adventures there, including um, some other really dumb stuff and a lot of fun times. Uh, But yeah, there you go. I think that's a day in the life of Wogan. That started as Taco Bell and it got into a little bit more as you learn about my card game shop stuff as well. Yeah, no, that's that's a good one. That's a good episode. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to thank everyone. Uh, If you have your Taco Bell stories or you have uh, how did you get to your card game shop, Leave anything you want there, and I'll see uh, what you guys got to say. And until next time, uh, I don't have a way to outro this video, so I'll just say goodbye, everyone. Bye. Have a fucking adventure, everyone.